we depart Pelican and enter Lysiansky Strait. Its western end brings us to the vast Pacific Ocean through a maze of rocks and islands. Every asterisk on the chart represents rocks. We see a fishing boat. This is their domain. We do not see many pleasure boats. We drop anchor in Lumber Cove. Chris and Christine check the surrounding waters for unseen hazards. The following morning brings rain, but fortunately no wind. Kelp indicates shallows. Barren rock reveals areas swept by huge seas, driven by forces sweeping across 6,000 miles of open ocean. I think this is the time to reflect on the fate of a Russian ship that reached this rugged coast 280 years ago. Under the command of Alexei Chirikov, the St. Paul reached this very spot and launched a longboat to seek out a safe anchorage and look for a source of fresh water. After one week, the boat had not returned. Chirikov then sent out his second longboat with ten men. They also failed to return. There was now no way to search for the missing boats or go ashore to explore or replenish their fresh water. After waiting as long as possible, they turned around and sailed back across the unforgiving ocean to Kamchatka. Happily, we suffer no such crisis and make our way to remote Baker Cove in Golding Harbor. Wisps of cloud drift wraith-like through the forest. We are now at the most northerly point we reached last year on the west coast of Chichikov Island. As we pass the opening to Black Bay, 
Christine catches a glimpse of a bear. So we cautiously negotiate the narrow entrance. She keeps a sharp lookout for rocks. Chris flies our drone for a look-see. A bold eagle takes flight. The black dot on the green sward is a bear. It moves, so it can't be a rock. The white dot is venture. If you look carefully, you can see deer crossing the stream, and at top left, a bear. We keep the drone well back so as not to disturb the wildlife. Instead, these photos were taken by a still camera with the equivalent of a 600 millimeter lens. They show deer happily browsing alongside a large grizzly bear. Previously, on Haida Gwaii, I watched a doe and her fawn grazing within 10 feet of several similar bears. We leave Black Bay through the narrow channel at top right. The rocks are very close and mostly underwater at high tide. Once back in the channel, we continue our southerly course. Methuselah's beard lichen decorates the trees. These trees appear to grow on an island of solid rock. Again, we see numerous dead and dying trees in these exposed places. We presume they are yellow cedar. Landslides are common on steep slopes. In remote areas, there is no collateral damage, unlike the tragedies in Haines in 2020 and Wrangell in 2023. We continue down the Pacific coast before entering the refuge of Kalinan Bay. We pass an unmarked rock which is submerged at high tide. When we leave the following day, we pass another landslide and head towards the massive mountains on Baranoff Island. We continue south down Neva Strait towards Sitka. We anchor in an unnamed bay on Magoon Island, which we have visited before. 
We deploy this hanging telltale to stop us walking through the near invisible insect screen. We take the big tender for a trip through the adjacent waters, including this narrow channel, which dries out at low tide. Yep. Its trees form a frame for venture. The water is crystal clear. Pillows of moss hang from the trees. The following day, we cover the few remaining miles to Sitka. We pass a traditional boat, which, to judge from the numerous vendors, most likely serves as a tender to fishing boats. We are allocated a berth, vacated by a fishing boat. We may have to move if she returns. Fishing is the lifeblood of Sitka. Here the crew of a Sena prepares her nets. These boats are very sophisticated as shown by the array of equipment on the mast. Those also provide a perch for the resident bald eagles and ravens. Sports fishing is also very important. Here the catch is prepared for their customers. The deck of this fine looking ship is loaded with processing equipment. A wide variety of boats fills the harbour. We meet up again with Jade and Star we last saw in Pelican. This traditional vessel, launched in 1927, is approaching her 100th birthday. Thunderbird has seen better days. Maintenance is hard in this harsh climate. Nature is always ready to take advantage of every opportunity.
the rain passes. We visit historic Ludwig's restaurant, which has been in business for more than 20 years. You need to make a reservation days in advance. The decor is unique and interesting, with carpet on the ceiling. This cider is organic and made from pears. This downtown shop has long been selling fascinating goods from Russia, displayed in their highly reflective window. The current situation must have made life tricky for them. This is our last evening in Sitka before we continue our journey. The morning sun reflects off the water onto the hull of an adjacent boat.